thank you guys for having me here. Uh, how do I change those? I'll be uh, telling you today about mining big data to get insights about behavior in general and personality in particular. And I'll also tell you about my new project uh, that uses a digital footprint in the form of faces uh, to predict some of those. So as you are all probably aware, because you're sitting in this room, uh, we are now surrounded by digital products and services that are constantly recording everything we are doing, which basically means that a large part of the big data that humanity is generating these days are the digital footprints, or let's call them behavioral residues, uh, that we are leaving uh, behind as we are interacting and using, uh, interacting with each other and using uh, the devices. And there's plenty of examples now showing how those uh, behavioral residues, digital footprint, can be used to uh, progress science. Uh, you have studies showing how you can track the spread of disease uh, using Twitter, and you will hear uh, more about it uh, today from Johannes. Uh, you have some papers here written by my colleagues from Stanford. Uh, one shows you uh, the evolution, studies the evolution of communities and language use uh, using uh, weblogs. And the other one uses browsing logs to study the relationship between diet uh, and health. Very interesting studies. I highly recommend you guys uh, take a look at those. My personal interest, my personal focus is on uh, looking how digital footprints relate to uh, psychodemographic traits and especially personality, but also other traits like intelligence, happiness, uh, demographic traits like ra uh, race, age, gender. Um, but also sexual orientation or political and religious views. And I've conducted quite a few studies with uh, my amazing collaborators. We looked at web browsing, uh, social networking activities, language use, uh, location within someone's egocentric social network, and uh, my weapon of choice, uh, Facebook uh, likes, uh, obviously. And it seems that basically your individual psychological traits are very highly related to the digital footprint that you're leaving behind, which is great for a few reasons. First of all, it means that we can gain additional insights about human minds by looking at big data, but also we can use big data to predict uh, your psychological traits. Very useful, for instance, in psychological assessment. And a few examples here based on uh, our uh, like study. You can see uh, there's a prediction power of uh, the model based on Facebook likes. You can see we can predict things like relationship status, whether your parents were divorced uh, or not, uh, your race, your political views, your sexual orientation, and number of other traits simply by looking at the Facebook likes that you have on your Facebook profile. Uh, here what I'm showing you is the accuracy of the model predicting personality you can see that the more likes we have, so the more digital footprints uh, we can record, the higher the accuracy of the model uh, predicting personality. And in our recent study from 2015, uh, written together with David Stilwell and Yo Yo Wu, uh, we showed that computer-based predictions of your personality are actually more accurate than predictions made by your coworkers, family members, uh, and even uh, spouses. You can see here that a computer needs 300 likes, and now uh, most of you guys would have much more than that on your profile to be able to judge your personality with an accuracy higher uh, than can be achieved by your spouse. And let's skip this one. But the big question that is uh, really uh, exciting is whether we can use another type of digital footprint, which is digital photos of our faces to make the same predictions. Now, think about it for a second. When, um, when we try to study digital footprint that you leave behind when you use Facebook or digital uh, devices like your phone or your credit cards, uh, those sources of information you can choose, in some countries at least, to basically not reveal to us as researchers. Also, when you are in the situation, let's say, of crossing the border, before you show them your ID, they don't really know who you are, 
so it's kind of difficult for them to use uh, this information for your benefit or uh, detriment. But think about it. If the same kind of predictions could be made solely on the base of your face, we're in a very different space when it comes to privacy, uh, insurance business, and also personal safety and security. Um, so I have a, a one amazing uh, face here on the screen, as you can see. And there's a lot of evidence that humans are making very snap, consistent, and persistent judgments of other people's faces based uh, on milliseconds of interaction very often. And there are quite a few features that we are using here to judge other people's personality, for instance. Broad faces, people having broad faces are perceived as more extroverted or more dominant. Large eyes are perceived, people with large eyes are perceived as more extroverted and conscientious and agreeable. Though, and this was really surprising to me when I was reading about it, there is no or very little and very conflicting evidence related to whether those judgments are even accurate. So it seems that our brains, perfected by millions of years of evolution, are not really as good as we would like to believe at predicting other people's intimate traits. So the big question that I had in my research is whether this face that you can see here actually contains information about these individuals individual traits. Am I fine to go on? Thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. So again, to uh, say the, state the question again, the big question is whether the face actually, or a digital picture of a face, actually contains information that would be useful in predicting individuals' intimate traits, like personality or political views or sexual orientation. And to answer this question, we uh, took my personality database this is a database that contains data on six million people. You have their scores on wide range of psychological questionnaires, but you also have rec records of their Facebook profiles, which contain, among other things, uh, their profile pictures. Um, so um, those pictures obviously are really uh, noisy. You have people uh, that put a picture of their dog or a cat or a baby or Chuck Norris uh, there instead of themselves. So it took us some time and money and effort to actually uh, pre-clean the database somewhat. Uh, but we ended up with about three million pictures and three million uh, associated uh, personality profiles. And now, before we even involved any sci-fi machine learning magic uh, to solve this problem, we did a very simple thing uh, that I believe most of you guys would do as well, which is basically sorted people by their psychological traits, from most extroverted to most introverted, and simply just look at those pictures. And I can't show you those pictures here individually, but what I can do, I can show you those pictures merged together. So what you can see here, you can see top most introverted and top most extroverted people, uh, and those pictures are just simply overlaid um, on top of each other. And you can see there are like very stark differences uh, between those two groups of people. So there are like three sets of features that I can see here. So person on the left, the most introverted group, so it's not a person, it's a group of people. So as you can see, first of all, the hair is not really dyed. Uh, there is a shade of glasses there, and she's not really uh, smiling. Whereas extroverted group of people, you can see uh, dyed hair, uh, smile, uh, makeup, very clear makeup, and also, interestingly, you cannot see nostrils. 
And this was something that confused us for a moment. We're just wondering why the hell extroverted people have no nostrils. Any guesses here? Exactly. I can see already some people know what's going on, some extroverts here. Obviously, when you're a professional at taking selfies, you're taking it like this, which basically means that uh, uh, we can't see your nostrils. But you can also see some clear physiological differences between those, uh, between those pictures. You can't see them very well here, but like one feature that is really visible is that an introverted face is broader than the extroverted face which is actually against what people believe is true. As I told you a few minutes ago, uh, broader faces are actually perceived as more extroverted. Okay, so I think that this suggests as much to you as it suggested to me that faces, profile pictures, do contain information about individuals' personality. So what we did next we tried to employ one of those sci-fi uh, machine learning models. In this case, we use deep learning approach to try to build models predicting personality from uh, profile pictures. And I believe that we're quite successful at this task. You can see extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism uh, can be predicted with quite some accuracy uh, based on a single profile picture uh, that you leave behind when you are uh, using Facebook. Conscientiousness seems to be the personality trait that is least predictable uh, from your face. So there is signal there. And now the next big natural question, can you guys actually hear me when I stand further from the microphone? Thank you, I just hate this audio system here. Um, sorry for that. So there is information, that's great, but now the next big question obviously is like what features of the face give the signal? Which parts of your face or what things that you do to your face are predictive of personality traits? And the answer to this question, I don't have it yet, to be honest. I'm work the problem with deep learning methods is that it's really difficult for a human being to understand how the hell the machine is running the prediction. But there are some elegant ways of trying to look behind the scenes. So in this case, what we have done, we asked this deep learning model to identify in a sample for us 100 most introverted females and 100 most extroverted females. So once again, those are not real scores of those people. Those are the predictions of their scores made by deep learning algorithm. And then what we've done with those 100 faces, we morphed them together so they look more or less like uh, one individual. And you can see here, those results are very similar to what we've, what we've got from simple overlaying pictures. You can see introverts, broader faces, glasses, no smiling, dark hair for extroverts, uh, uh, quite clearly a very different person. Uh, also, as you can see here, the face uh, of an introvert is significantly broader than the face of an extrovert. The results also do not hold for eyes. You can see an introverted and extroverted eyes. They're of the same size, more or less. Uh, at least I can't, we couldn't measure a stark difference there. What is striking is that the extroverted eyes, they look larger because they use makeup. But also you can see that the extroverted females were using lenses here because they uh, have, uh, the eyes are much uh, less uh, dark. Which obviously is just a hypothesis because maybe extroverts for some reasons have just uh, brighter eyes. The very similar results you can observe for males. Again, broader face versus narrower face for extroverts. And they also uh, work the same across Races. You can see African Americans, introverts and extroverts, and Asian Americans, introverts and extroverts. And I hope that you kind of clearly see uh, that the pattern is the same. And now, before they chase me off the stage, I have a quiz here for you. Can you guys identify which personality traits we are seeing here? People on the left score low on it, people on the right score high on it. What's your intuition? 
My agreeableness. You guys are really good. It's the first test of this kind. It's actually the first time I'm showing those pictures to anyone, so I'm glad, I'm glad it worked. Okay, another one. This one is difficult. This is spontaneous versus conscientious. I think that what gives it is the, the hurdle of the guy that is spontaneous. You could see that he clearly <laughs> didn't work on it. Okay, two left. Openness, well done, Johannes. You have some magic powers here. It was a good one. And the last one, obviously, neuroticism. And the last 30 seconds, I want to just basically mention a few limitations of this research. So first of all, and you guys have to remember about it when you study big data, this data is noisy, which is good on one hand because it might mean that if I actually got a clean data set, my accuracy would be higher. But on the other hand, we also have many other factors that affect the picture you guys see here. One of them is that people had a chance to choose those pictures because they liked them the most. So there's basically another variable here confounding our results, which is maybe extroverts just like the pictures on which their faces seem slimmer, or maybe they just use Photoshop to stretch them. I'm perhaps not extroverted enough uh, to uh, be aware of that happening. And finally, the consequences. And I think that consequences of that are really uh, significant. And forgetting about, well, let's not forget about it. One of it is obviously trying to understand the correlates of personality. If we can understand which physiological features of faces differ between introverts and extro extroverts, maybe we can gain additional insight about the source of this individual difference. But obviously the other consequence is in privacy and personal safety. Actually, we conducted the same analysis. I'm not going to show you the results today, uh, trying to predict sexual orientation. Very high accuracy as well. And now think about all of those countries where this can put you uh, in trouble, or even places in the United States. Uh, thank you guys a lot for, for your attention. Thank you. Okay. Um, when do the machine learning of like the face categorization, do you do that like according to different races? Um, for example, you show the picture of like Asians, American, uh, Asians, African, or like Caucasians. Of course, like people from different race, they have different facial structures. And um, did you do that separately, or you do that overall and you separate into different groups? Thanks. That's a very good question, and I wish I actually um, uh, figured it out before I spent a week uh, running my first analysis. That's, uh, that's, exactly, that's exactly what happened. Uh, you need to split your sample by gender and by race and also by age, because otherwise, uh, this is what uh, machine learning models pick up first. Thank you. Oh, is it possible that we expand this technique to evaluate some more minute features of facial expressions, such so uh, we can link in, we can link this big data approach to other specific topics, say for my interest, like understanding appraisal patterns for human emotions, because there are some uh, self-reporting techniques that are not valuable for uh, this big data collection, but this uh, picture, the pictures of uh, Facebook users might provide some uh, very subtle information that we like. I wonder like, if we can just enhance the precision of uh, identifying the patterns from the faces by aggregating the photos, so. Facebook likes it, this is what the case. Any variable, that, any kind of variable that I want to predict, there was some predictive uh, power in the model. Thank you. We have time for one last question. Hi, I'm, I'm wondering if most of the pictures that you used in this study were selfies or pictures that were posted by others or mixed? Because I'm wondering, because I think if for selfies, there must be some other things that the person might have done, like the particular posture they would want to take a picture and that might kind of give some information about the personality of the person. So I'm curious if the result will be true for 
um, pictures that are posted by others or other kind of sources of pictures? It's a very good question, and again, I don't have a good answer. We use publicly available profile picture, which has a disadvantage of being highly curated. It's something that a user really chose. It's something that he or she thought really well represented her or him. Uh, very often it's Chuck Norris. Uh, sometimes it's a kid. Sometimes it's also the person that you want to look at. But I uh, didn't look at other people. Mo like my intuition would tell me that kind of the more spontaneous you are in your picture, the more information that might be about your uh, intimate traits there. Thank you guys.